Today we will be taking this USA Trains S4 switcher and converting it from DC power, which is rail power, and putting in a battery pack, and then putting in a control system so we can use a remote control. Most trains start as DC, which means we electrify the rails with a variable voltage that tells you the locomotive how fast to go, and how bright the light will be, and how much smoke it produces. So we usually start with a transformer. That's what this is. This will allow you to control the speed, which basically controls the voltage coming to the track. So what you will need to do this is a train from USA Trains. I got the S4 switcher. You will go to CVP products and look at their Airwire 900. I use GardenRailroadSupply.com to buy the controller, the decoder, and the battery. This is Garden Railroad Supply, so we just scroll down under the CVP products and we can see the S4 drop-in decoder. This has all the necessary plugs, so it's a very quick, easy swap in, swap out. Here's what we use to control the locomotive. It is a CVP products T6000 programmer controller. We can turn it on right there. This allows you to control speed and direction. You can activate the smoke unit, turn lights on and off. I used Charles Rowe to buy the trains and the track. So the first step will be to remove the lid. This part comes off, the cab will stay. So we have to be very careful about this horn. And let's see. So on the underside, we have two screws here that need to come out. There's two screws here on the front trucks that need to come out. And there's two screws here in the back trucks. And that should take the cover right off. So you can see here where the four switches were now we have carved out using a Dremel tool, we have carved out a big hole for the charge port and then the other two switches are in the exact same location. So here we've removed the six screws along the bottom of the locomotive and we can take that shell off. On the left there's some wires going to the smoke unit and the lights. On the right you can see the main circuit board. Here is that main circuit board. There are three screws that hold it down. You can see connectors on the upper left for the lights. On the upper right, there's a wire coming off for the smoke unit. And on the bottom, you can see both power pickups and motor connectors coming out as wires. Here, these wires have a connector and then they dive through the chassis to go to the motors and the power pickups. Here, I have removed the board. On the left, you can see wires for the motor and power pickup for the front truck. On the right is the rear truck. You can also see the cab there. Here I have added masking tape to signify the power pickups which will not be used. Zooming in here you can see where the four switches originally were. I have taken a Dremel and cleared out the middle two and opened up a bigger hole for the charge port. Here you can see the decoder in place. It is attached with the original three screws into the original positions. That places the switches and the charge port down through those original switch positions. Looking closely, we can see labels for the battery coming in. MF on the left is for front motor. MR is for the rear motor. These connectors are used throughout to connect the batteries, the smoke unit, the motors. This is the very front of the locomotive. Just under the shell, there is a lead weight. I have added some servo tape with the red plastic and now have peeled off the red plastic. I did have to carve out the screw holes and that back hole. 
Now we place our battery on top of that servo tape, being careful not to block the path for the shell screws. Here you can see the battery on the left and it is plugged into the battery in port on the decoder. This is the connector for the front light. It has three wires. One wire is the ground, another is for the headlight, and another is for the number boards. The headlight should only be on in the forward position and the number boards should always be on. When I first connected this, the number boards would turn on in forward and turn off in reverse, and the headlight was always on, so I had to flip that connector around backwards. Here is the connector for the rear lights, and similar, it has a black ground, a red wire, and a white wire. One is for the cab light, and the other for, is for the backup headlight. Again, when I first tested it, the cab light would go on and off, for reverse would go on in reverse and off for forward and the rear headlight would stay on continuously so I had to flip this connector around backwards. Here is the rear motor connector. I was careful to tuck this away from the shell screw. Here I've connected the front motor to the decoder and remember I had masking tape on the power pickup so they, I would not use those. Here you can see those wires diving down through the chassis. This is the wire to the smoke unit. We plug that directly into the smoke unit. There is a wire you have to remove on this particular locomotive. I have also removed the sliders. There used to be power sliders in between the wheels and those just create drag. That was to pick up the track power, but we don't need them anymore. So on the front trucks and the rear trucks, I've removed those track sliders. Now let's remove these power sliders. So we flip the chassis over and we'll have to remove these four screws. Here it is with this cover removed. We have to be careful not to touch anything else, but we can gently remove the sliders. Here you can see the part of the truck that's towards the middle of the locomotive. The wires that are still connected are the motors. Those are the outer wires, but you can see I've removed the inner wires, which is for the power pickups. You can also see here the charge port and the two remaining switches. The motor switch is really the main power switch. And now we're ready to go. We flip the switch and you can hear the power turn on. There's another switch on the other side for sound, but we don't have that installed. I did remove the side of the trucks by removing these three screws because I thought I could remove some of this wiring. Turns out it's completely unnecessary, so you don't have to do that. Okay, I've roughed it out here. It's my rough path. Through here, we'll need some more track, obviously. And it turns around right here by the front door. So this is about an eight foot kind of diameter right here. And then these are 20s as I go through these sweeping curves, 20 foot, 20 foot. This is gonna be a combination because it's not quite 20 foot, it's like 16 feet. And then as you can see, it's kind of pretty, a bit tight on the back side there. So that might have to be eight foot or 10 foot. So I obviously need some more radius. And here's one of the first tests. You can see the remote there. And here it goes. Now it is fully battery operated. There is no power going through these rails. This is the T6000 controller. The speed knob is simple enough. The direction button will let you change directions. On this particular locomotive, you will press zero to toggle the lights on and off. And then when you go forward, that'll turn on the forward headlight. When you go reverse, that'll turn on the reverse headlight. And function zero toggles on and off the smoke unit. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit like for this video. See you guys later.